Well, Amy, um, thank you for joining us, and uh, I wanted to let you go ahead and speak. I'm not sure what you wanted to talk about, if it was on these lines or not, but I know that you have a lot of um, experience with mental health in the workplace and how you have some, an app. Did you want to share something with us? Oh, um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I actually, <laughs> well, I have a lot of, uh, you know, like a huge patch passion for, um, you know, uh, workspace, um, wellness and, um, and for, you know, I, I improving the culture analytics inside workspaces, um, and really looking at, um, uh, improving the culture and, uh, you know, from a mental health perspective, um, you know, within the workspaces and, and what you were talking about with, uh, um, you know, what, what you were talking about, uh, Matt, um, uh, with, you know, um, work uh, recruiters being able to just go to an employee's avatar. I could imagine indeed.com actually doing something like that. Um, <clears throat> because they're kind of already doing something like that right now. Um, like one thing I've seen, uh, you know, I was reading about this the other day that, that they're having, they have a tool where uh, employers can now have an, a, a candidate uh, just like upload, uh, like record um, their response to a question that they have. So they're not even scheduling time with a candidate now. Now they're just recording, uh, you know, some kind of response to their canned question. Um, you know, like there's no conversation or getting to know the candidate. It's, you know, just kind of like, oh, okay, well, you know, um, we're, we're going to store your answer, you know, uh, and like, you know, maybe we'll, we'll take a look at it, you know, maybe we won't. Um, and, you know, there's no even taking the time to schedule, uh, you know, like a meeting with a candidate, you know, like the, it's, it's it's a very um, detached, inhuman kind of way of uh, uh, you know interviewing a, a candidate to work for your company. Truly, I think we're going to see a, an arms race in a way with this. That's going to lead to actually an increase in the need for one-on-one -on -one in-person interviewing, and that's you know you guys have probably seen the the videos of people using these apps now where. Um, the AI is auto transcribing the interview process and giving you the answers um, on your screen. And they, there was one where a guy who like knows nothing about mechanical engineering interviewed for like a rocket science job or something and was able to, to pass, you know, like every single question in the technical interview. Um, and so uh, we have that on the candidate side. And then on the hiring side, we have, we've already got tons of AI enabled in some of these hiring platforms to help them screen resumes and find the best fit candidates and, and kind of, you know, anyone who's ever done hiring, like, oh my God, if going through a thousand resumes, it's it's like the worst thing that you, like you sit there going, hiring is the most important thing that we can do for our organization. Like having the right people is, is such a huge competitive advantage and it influences the culture and all this stuff. So you're like, Heck, we got to do it. And by the time you get to resume 80, you're like, eyes are bleeding and you just want to kill yourself. Like it's, it's horrible. So, uh, you know, organizations of course are going to use AI to help screen contents or sorry, candidates. But uh, now, so now we have candidates using AI to write their resumes, to apply for the job, to write their cover letter, to do their interviews. And then we have organizations using AI to screen the candidate, to read those AI written responses, to, to conduct those interviews. I think that there's going to be a time when people are like, look, we are going to, with no screens, no digital, like no nothing, sit in the same room and stare at each other until we decide whether or not I want to hire you. Because I, I just, we can't even tell who people really are anymore in the hiring process. Amy? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but I think that that's going to cause an uptick of um, compliance companies. So I, I, I know someone who is, uh, he's has a company called Polygraph AI. And like, it's basically a governance company that is going to be able to 
um, produce some kind of verifiable um, proof of whether or not something has been created by AI or something is AI or if something is uh, you know real. Uh, I mean, this is yeah. You know, I'm I'm sure you probably have seen um the ai influencers that you know like like are um you know the there there are a couple of screenshots that i saw on x that um that were like oh you know this is um an ai uh image holding on to an an, an like a notepad that is um you know ai notes taken or something you know and it looks like a hundred percent real, you know, it's, it's really very bizarre. Um, the other thing I was going to say is I've actually, I've created a couple of GBTs that have, have been pretty useful just, you know, in an everyday kind of way. Um, and like the, the things that I, you know, that, that I, I did for myself were like, you know, like a uh, strategic planning for you know for my own company you know just to, like creating my own cheap gpt that has all the data and everything in my own company and um <clears throat> but what i did also was that i safeguarded my own myself um to have open ai not have access to any of my own data um and so like i signed uh like a privacy kind of thing, uh, you know, ensuring that that um, the open AI wouldn't be training on any of my data before I started making any of the GPTs that I've made. Um, the the other thing like that I think is kind of cool is you can use some of the GPTs in there, um, you know, just kind of look around. One of them that I like is uh is an is the negotiator so you can just like you know have basically just kind of in your i mean i'll do this in my off time i'll just be like okay i i want to maybe prepare for a sales meeting like a sales call and so i'll you know put in my own like my own sales pitches and stuff like that and like and i'll deal with whatever kind of uh pushback there might be that um that a person might have on a sales call so you know it's in those kind of ways it's been kind of helpful um yeah just to kind of share from my own perspective thanks for letting me uh be part of the conversation heather and taylor well, thank thanks. you amy I appreciate it. And I think, um, Matt, thank you for pointing out that what she was talking about. I think um, we posted it at the top there with the verification bypass using stable diffusion. Um, but yeah, so that there's all kinds of things uh, out there to, about verifying the accuracy or whether or not it's screening for AI. And do you all think that um, the majority of them, they're they're pretty hard to say whether they're accurate or not. I mean, they're, it's impossible that they, how would we know that they're accurate? What's the, and what is the purpose of that? Beyond I mean, the, trying to see if it's a person that is applying for a job or taking a test. Oh, Salma, are you going to go? No, I saw her, her mute microphone go off. Um, oh. The, the open AI, you know, AI detector that they had, they took it down. And a lot of these AI writing detectors that I've seen that were being used by educational institutions have caused more harm than good. They were they were inaccurate. There was tons of false positives. You know, um, there there were times when they were working well, but the problem is 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 that they they just weren't weren't reliable. And um, you know, I, I think that it makes it makes a ton of sense, right? It, it's quite easy to tell just as a human, if, if looking at it, if someone does like a very basic prompt in ChatGPT to write something, I can pick out like, oh, ChatGPT wrote that. But if you do a fairly complex prompt with, with various instructions on the tone and the voice and syntactical things and idiosyncrasies and all the stuff that I like to include in what I call a write print, then you can reliably produce content that none of these detectors think is written by an AI like over and over again, you know, the scoring 100% human written. And um, I think with the images and things, there may be some some 
uh, other aspects to it in terms of like the way that the pixels come together, like maybe there's there's some things that could be detected. But I, I personally don't think that it's it's a very easy task to 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 try to figure out whether or not something is created by an AI unless there's some kind of like algorithmic or data or like file format or there there's some other piece there. Just if you're just using an AI to to analyze text or images, uh, I don't I don't see that ending well for us. I think it's going to be a continual one up, one upping of, you know, the the, the AI writers get more human like, the detectors get a little bit better, back and forth, back and forth, and and there will always be people who figure out how to hack the system. Um, it it definitely does feel like there needs to be a little bit of a fingerprint or something dropped in on on things in, in order for it to be. Uh, seen as AI created, but then when we do do those invisible watermarks um, in like say, uh, images from Midjourney and things like that, there's ways to remove them. And and so if you really want to remove that kind of information that you can. Allie? Yes, I can speak a little bit to the image and potentially, you know, any type of a more a visual thing. Um, how that is potentially going to be addressed, but I 100% also agree with you on the written part. That's going to